Hey y'all. Hi. <laughs> Hi, we're doing it. I feel like this is already the ill-fated live because my eyes have been watering for like an hour as I've been getting ready. And then someone started mowing a lawn literally right outside my window, right when I was ready to start. But we're doing it. We're here. It's happening. And there are already so many people in the comments, including Simbri. Hey girl. Hey, I'm really excited that everyone's here. I'm going to do my empties live. So I have them. I've been keeping them in this bag, which when Print Fresh sent me PR, it came in this bag. It's like my favorite print of theirs, the pink Bagheera print. And it was actually what I would have loved when they first sent me PR, but they didn't have it in stock when I was receiving PR the first time. And they just sent me the robe with it. Look, I live. I haven't washed it yet, so... Oh, I haven't been able to wear it yet, but it's been the best bag to keep my empties. I looked in it the other day. It was full and I was like, we're going to film in empties and we're going to do it live. So here we are. All right. I'm checking in with the chat. Chad is here. Yes, queen. I'm so excited. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yes. Let's get into the meat of the stream indeed. Um, but actually, I have something really important to tell you before we start. Everyone who's here in the chat, and if you're watching back, this is part of why I wanted to do a live stream, because it's something that's coming up this weekend. And I posted this on my community tab, so some of you might have already seen it. I am hosting a virtual book launch. I'm so thrilled to be doing it, just because what an awesome thing to do. But also, I'm really honored that my friend Sharna asked me to, because She's a good friend, someone I've known for years, longer than I've known Joe, actually. Um, and she's also a mentor of mine. She was my original tango teacher and has been kind of like a spiritual mentor and a tango, tango mentor for all of these years, over a decade. She wrote a book. She's absolutely brilliant. She wrote a book called Lead and Follow. This is an advanced copy that I got to read because I'm hosting the book launch. It's not available yet, but here it is in my hot little hands. And uh, I'm hosting her book launch and everyone can come. It's free to attend. There's going to be live tango music. And uh, the book is about inspired leadership and followership in the workplace through the lens of the dance of tango, which is a balance between leadership and followership. Can you even? I know. I know. So um, go to sharnafabiano.com. How are we? Can you see her name across the top? Because it's a live, I don't know if I can like add a link. I'll add it in the description box after. But if you're watching this live and you want to like sign up right away, sharnafabiano.com. And when you get there, you'll be able to click on the link to be invited to sign up to go to the launch party. It's from 4 to 5 p.m. this coming Sunday, Valentine's Day. And I would love it so much if, if you guys could be there. It's just, it's just like an open online party with Sharna talking about the book, listening to tango music, and like learning about her ideas and the inside of her brain. So I think that a lot of you will really, really love it. I hope that you can come. All right, the chat. Simbri's coming to the book launch. Yes. Emily says, can someone explain to me why lots of people wash clothes they just purchased before wearing them? You know, it's funny. I'm actually not usually one to do that. There's almost nothing I love more than wearing clothing that hasn't been washed yet, like in its crisp new condition usually. But I have been doing it with Print Fresh because they're these cotton pajamas and they come like so crispy and like freshly printed, you know what I mean? And so I've just been like popping in, in the wash, doing like a wash dry cycle so that they already have that slightly broken and feeling before I wear them. It's just, it's what I did with the robe that they sent me before. And that's what I'm planning to do with that. But it is funny. I know it, it Joe is like that. He'll wash anything that's new. He will, he will wash it like before he ever wears it. And I'm like, you're missing out on the best part of new clothing. <laughs> okay, let's do the empties, shall we? There's actually something kind of wild that's the first round of empties that I have to talk about because Julia and I have already filmed our video in which we made our own body scrubs. But 
I, I'm not able to post it yet because we want to come back and film a second segment where we review our own body scrubs so that when the video is posted, you can see us making the scrubs and then you can immediately see whether what we did actually worked. So I've made them, we're using them, but we haven't like filmed the second part of the video yet. But when we made the body scrubs, I went into my empties and I took out everything that could be used to house a body scrub and put our own homemade body scrubs in it. You know what I mean? Like I recycled the containers. So I have here these four containers of homemade body scrub because they're my empties and I haven't talked about them yet. And I need to talk to you about what was actually in the product in the containers before I repurposed them. This is making sense, right? It, you're with me? You got me? <laughs> Just tell me in the chat that it's making sense. Oh, everyone's still talking about washing clothes before you wear them. But yes, repurposing. Miss Davis says, yes, repurposing. That's been one of the most amazing part. Like, I'm so inspired by making our own scrubs. I mean, it's been successful. Spoiler alert, it's kind of been successful in almost every way. Although there was a moment there when I thought it was all going to go south. <laughs> we were worried. I'll let you know all about it when we actually film the video. But it has been really cool to repurpose these containers instead of just, you know, putting them in the recycling and hope, hoping that they don't actually end up in a landfill, which I think, you know, these days it's kind of hit or miss whether recycling is actually happening. So um, it's great, great, great to be able to be reusing them. And, you know, we'll reuse them over and over again because we have so much body scrub materials. I think we'll be able to keep refilling, refilling them with our own homemade body scrub. So let's talk about this. This was a fig cleansing balm. The I'm from fig cleansing balm. It was in the yes style advent calendar and I hated it. I love the fig smell so much. Like it's got a fresh fig smell so much that when I was ordering the scented oils to put in our body scrubs, they ordered a fig one. Cause like using this up, I was determined to use it up. The, using it up really made me remember how much I love that fresh fig tree smell. Like you smell the fig and you also smell the broken leaves with fig milk seeping out of them as you reach up to pluck a fig and your hand crushes some of the leaves. You know what I mean? Like that kind of scent. This smelled like that. It was amazing. But it just has that slightly plasticky feel and it felt like it left behind a little bit of a film. So I would use it. It would remove my makeup, remove my mascara. It was lovely as a cleansing balm, but then it would leave behind a bit of a film and I would always feel like I had to wash really, really well with my second cleanse. And, you know, I usually do second cleanse, but oil cleansers and balm, there are so many oil cleansers and balm cleansers on the market that don't feel like they leave a film like that. So I wouldn't buy this again, but I've repurposed this container to house <laughs> a body scrub with which Julia and I named cleaning supply. <laughs> More to come on why it's called that. This is something, too bad Simri is gone because uh, she was here at the beginning of the live and this was actually a gift from her. On my birthday last year, and my birthday is coming up at the end of February, so it was almost a year that it took me to use this up. The Indy Lee, what are they called? Radiance Renewal Peel Exfoliate and Brighten. I think that the reason Simbri gave this to me for my birthday, it was those like exfoliating pads, you know what I mean? Like uh, toner pads. I think the reason she gave it to me is because she knew from watching one of my old videos that I really like this kind of product. I feel like those slightly exfoliating pads, I really like using this kind of product is what I should say. I really like using them. The slightly exfoliating pads, I feel like I can really cleanse my skin, like really get off any dirt and grime that might be stuck from, you know, sleeping on my pillow overnight. Or, um, you know, sometimes I just feel like I have a little bit of roughness, dry skin, dead skin. It feels great to tone and exfoliate and go in with one of those little pads. And I used to chain buy them before my no buy year, before the revolution that happened and my understanding of how quickly I was using up expensive skincare, I used to chain buy the ones from Arcona. I really loved them. But when I realized how bad of a choice it was, both for my wallet to buy something that I would go through so quickly, instead of buying just a liquid toner that I could use patting in with my hands, when I realized that I was like, I'm never gonna buy this type of product again, it's not cost effective for me. And it's also not 
very environmentally friendly to have something that you're like throwing away every single day. Um, so I believe Simbri got these in PR and she was like, oh, Hannah really loves this sort of thing. I'll give it to her. And it was around the time of my birthday. So that's why she gave it to me. And indeed, I really loved using them. I loved going at my skin with them and like exfoliating physically with them and also chemically with them. And Indie Lee is a nice brand, perfectly nice. I just, I'm not going to buy these for the reason that I stopped buying them years ago. And that's the reason that Simbri gave this to me. This is making sense. It's like, great. Of course it was great, but just not going to repurchase, you know? And now this is housing a body scrub, which I have called white tea slash fig slash creme B. Not very creative name, but it was one that I kind of whipped together at the end. How's everyone? I feel like when I'm live, I, oh my gosh. Yes, Rosalie, it's so interesting you say this. Okay, maybe off topic, but how often do you wash your pillowcases? I have been um, just thinking, like literally today I'm washing my pillowcases because I just started thinking that maybe I need to start washing them more often. Like every time I do laundry, just throw my pillowcases in because um, I, I go back and forth sometimes struggling with acne and sometimes not. But recent, and when I do get it, it tends to be all around my chin and jawline, which is all hormonal. Recently, I've been getting it on the sides of my cheeks. And I think it might be bacterial. And I think it might have been coming from my pillowcases. So it's just funny that you brought that up because it's like been a whole thing that's going on over here for me, like washing my pillowcases at the house down boots. Simbri, you bought them for me? And I never knew. Thank you. I loved them. <laughs> I've been using them consistently. Aw. Yes, you'll be pumped how much less breakouts you get. Yeah, I think washing the pillowcases is like a, is a whole thing. Emma Harrison says, girl, your skin is glowing. Thank you. It's the beauty lights. <laughs> but it's also probably that I'm literally wearing, what is it? Glow, a little bit of Glow by Auric, Glow Lust. A little bit of the Chanel Luminizer <laughs> and a lot of Glossier Future Dew, like all together on my skin because my skin's been really, really dry lately. So I felt like I just needed to do the most to counteract it. Glad it's working. Uh, I don't think it's mask me because I, um, I never leave the house. I, my version of quarantine is like never, ever, ever going anywhere. I only wear the mask only when I like take the baby on a walk and that's like once a week at most. And then I pop it on to ever answer the door if I need to. So I'm really not over here wearing a mask most of the time. Someone says, I love your hair texture. Thanks. It was in French braids for like a week and I just took the braids out to start the live. Also, I'm trying something new for me. It's this thing called a necklace. I don't I've never really had one that I've worn like this. You know what I mean? Uh, the, a brand sent this to me. It's called the, the Happiness Boutique. After the, this finishes being live, I'll I'll put the link down below. What do you think? It's weird. I feel like there's the neckline of your garment and then there's this other line. Like, how do you even wear a necklace like that? I don't know. Let's, it's like, we'll, we'll sort it out later. Okay, let's keep going with the empties. The danger of this, doing empties live, this was a bit experimental. I'm realizing now that the danger is that I'm just going to want to answer the comments. Are you watching Drag Race UK? Am I ever? Am I ever watching Drag Race UK? I feel like it's not too soon to say this. It's one of the best seasons of Drag Race, any, any part of the franchise in history. I mean, I feel like it's probably up there with like the top it's probably in like the top three to five seasons for me personally. I just think it's such a good cast, such a good season, and it's blowing the current regular Drag Race season out of the water. Joe and I both feel that way. Like from day one, we were like, this it, this is so amazing and it's so much better than the regular one. Really, really good. Okay, let's keep going. So um, this also currently has a body scrub in it, Julia's specialty, which she called the tea. That was the name of her body scrub that she mixed up and she gave me a little bit of it. She has like a bigger container, um, but it was the Derma E Essentials Microdermabrasion Scrub. I think I might have mixed feelings about this because I 
this is sort of an extension of my recent discussion about how much I love the love using those pads, but I'm not over here buying them for myself, but I'm very grateful that Simbri bought them for me because I love really feeling like I'm polishing my skin, you know? And I think one of the things I like about pads like this is that you're getting that effect, but it, they're just cloth. So they're not so abrasive that you're going to like tear your skin. I never feel worried that I'm actually like hurting my skin with microdermabrasion scrubs. I sometimes feel worried that I think I've heard through the grapevine that like they're all bad for your skin. They're, it can never be good for your skin to go at it with a microdermabrasion scrub. And yet this one from Dermy E, I loved the way that it made my skin feel so smooth. And it, and it always felt like it got every last scrap of like clogged and dry skin off of my face and left my skin really, really clear for me to pack in my skincare overnight. So I would have the best results when I would use this. And I never used it more than once a week. Like I would only use it once in a while and, you know, really exfoliated my face physically. And then I would follow up with like a really good moisturizing serum and like a really thick layer of moisturizer. And then in the morning, my skin would feel amazing. So I loved using it. Um, but I just, I don't know enough about the actual science, the actual study of microdermabrasion scrubs like this and physical exfoliation to know whether or not I feel like it can, I can in good conscience recommend this. I don't feel like it hurt my skin or destroyed my skin. You know what I mean? I used up the whole thing. I was actually really sad when I used up the last little bit of it. Sorry. My nose, which never runs is running because I'm live. I think it's against me. At least the lawnmower has stopped. Maybe the whole world's not against me, just my nose. Uh, so that's what I have to say about this. I, what can I say? I loved it. I loved using it. <laughs> I love exfoliating my face. And it's a really good little container for body scrub. So there's that. And then this last, I actually, um, <laughs> this is a, this is from the grocery store. It was a whipped soap scrub and it was on the heels of, of that video that I filmed with Julia where we talked about different body scrubs. I was doing our weekly grocery ordering and just out of curiosity, I searched body scrub to see if there were any at the grocery store. And there was this one, which was from the brand Pacha, Pacha Soap Company. And it was like a whipped soap body scrub. And we had been talking so much about how that's like its own subcategory of body scrubs. So I was just like, oh, I'm so curious about that. And I put it in the cart. I was like, I'll, I'll try it and I'll report back on my channel. And then when it arrived, I was like, mm, I'm so glad I got this because this is the perfect size container for a body scrub to me. And I, as soon as I started using it, my one thought about it was I can't wait to use this up and repurpose the container for my own body scrubs. It's like this big, big jar. I really like that. The scrub itself was very soap-like, very like kind of like creamy and mealy and not all that scrubby. And I didn't really like it. 100% wouldn't buy it again, but I'm very pleased that I have this container to repurpose. And the body scrub that's in this container right now was like the one that kind of got out of control. And I don't know, the jury's a little bit still out. It's called No Spicy S'more Comment. And you'll <laughs> you'll learn more about that in the, the Make Your Own Body Scrub video. All right, the lawnmower is back. The first four empties are out of the way and we're gonna move on to the ones that are in the bag. Uh, while we're waiting for it to pass the window, I'm gonna check the comments. Emily Ruth, thank you. I'm glad that you like the quality. It's all Joe. He has figured out how to make it so that it live, stream, live streams through my filming camera instead of the the YouTube, the, the video, the computer. The YouTube, the video, the computer. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. No, I'm not. Oh, yes. Thank you for saying everybody. Remember to click the thumbs up button. I do appreciate it. Yeah, it's so funny that I, I'm here like through the winter struggling with the lawn mowing. And whenever I comment about it, people are like, it's snowing where I live. Like, <laughs> they're like I wish that I wish that people were mowing their lawns here. But it's a real thing here. 
My own page says my own body scrub went moldy because I got water in it. You mean one that you made yourself? Because I think it's, this is like an interesting thing that when you make it yourself, you're not including any kind of preser preservatives against that happening. <laughs> but frankly, I, I use so much body scrub at a time and I use it so quickly that I don't think that there's going to be like time for mold to grow in it. <laughs> like that, I think that that's the way I'm going to be taking care of that problem. Amira, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, Amira, I love your Instagram, the mod woman. I, I'll try to remember to link below. This is like one of my favorite Instagram accounts to follow. Every time I'm scrolling through and I see you come up, I'm just, my breath is taken away. I'm always just like this stunning woman. Like it's just, you bring me joy every time you post and I'm so glad that I'm following you. All right, I, I'm never going to get through these empties if I if I keep just checking in with you guys, but it's so delightful that you are here. Okay, what should we talk about first? Um, I think I want to talk about these sheet masks. And actually, okay, so Joe, I was just talking about how he's helping me with the quality of everything. He's also been helping me with, with schedule. Like he's, he's very like, um, you know, let's be filming next week's videos this week. And so we can sort of, you know, relax into it, <laughs> which is, he's right. And he, and it's been great, but it's taking me a little bit of getting used to it. And this is case in point because I, I filmed a video that's coming up very soon about how I spent my winter budget, my little quarterly budget at the beginning of January, and in that video, I talked about the fact that I actually bought a pack of sheet masks because I had successfully used up all of my sheet masks during my year of less stuff. And I filmed that video not quite a week ago. So I feel like it's old news. I feel like everybody should know already. But because Joe's helping me schedule out, it hasn't gone up on my channel yet. So here I am live streaming and I want to reference this bit from a video, but it's probably either going to be Friday's or Monday's video. So spoiler alert to that video, I bought a pack of sheet masks these ones, which were recommended to me by Sarah Hubler from, uh, I guess her channel used to be called The Beauty Hub, and I will probably never not think of it as that, but now it's just Sarah Hubler. She's so, so wonderful to watch, and I really recommend her. I'll try to remember to link her after the video is done streaming, after this live is done. Um, but she once recommended, because I'm always talking about how one sheet mask is as good as another, right? Every time I have sheet masks, masks in my empties, I'm like, look, a sheet mask provides a physical barrier to evaporation and that helps me pack my good skincare into my skin. So I kind of don't care if it's fancy. I don't care about the brand. I don't care how much it costs. I just want like a, a thing to put on my face and that's fine, right? So I was, t I held forth about that in an empties video like a year or two ago and Sarah sent me an Instagram DM and she was like, listen, I feel the same way about all sheet masks except for those from MetaHeal. She was like, the MetaHeal sheet masks are something special and they really do transform and plump the skin. So I put that away, I filed that away in my brain. And then a year and a half later when I finally used up all my sheet masks and had the opportunity to buy my own, I bought a pack from MetaHeal. So I bought this one, the NMF aqua ring ampule and they are really really nice they're really really nice i i think i've used these twice and i think maybe i haven't paid close enough attention to know whether or not this the mask was like really transforming and hydrating my skin um, but i do feel like they're high quality they're great and these sheet masks have been helping to stave off the very dry skin that i'm starting to develop as we like go through the winter because even though it's warm enough to mow your lawn here. It's still cold enough to put the heater on. And so my skin is like drying up and flaking off like it always does when I have the heater on in the house I'm living in. So qu coincidentally, curiously, it wasn't those sheet masks that kind of like showed me the error of my ways in terms of tarring all sheet masks with the same brush. But another sheet mask that has come my way recently, and these actually came in PR. So this brand Lather, if you've heard of Lather, will you put it in the comments? Because when I looked them up, I was like, oh, it seems like a whole thing that people know about that I don't know about. 
and this was the first time I'd heard of them was when they reached out and offered to send me stuff. So let me know if you've heard of Lather. I guess that they have like brick and mortar stores and it seems like they're everywhere, but I just have never seen one or I, I don't know. I'll, I'll kind of check in and see if anyone has heard of Lather. Um, but one of the things, they sent me a, a few things um, and most of them have been, that I've tried so far, have actually been um, quite nice. Like actually I brought down, this is something I've never owned before, a, a body scrubbing brush. And I've actually really liked having it. So when I went upstairs to grab the body scrubs that used to be empties, I grabbed this too because I knew I was going to be talking about lather. It's been pretty good. It kind of hurts, but I kind of like it. And it and it helps me exfoliate the skin on my back, which tends to get like clogged up a little bit. So that's been pretty impressive. And they sent me a couple bath bombs and some bath salts and stuff. These sheet masks though. Y'all, I woke up. I, I need to go in order because first there's the weird, first there's a bunch of good stuff and then one really weird thing about them. Let's go experientially. So here's me. Oh, sheet masks and PR. My skin's really dry. I'm going to sheet mask. Take out the thing. It is the kind of sheet mask that I love. It's like milky and really, really soft so that the thing sticks to your face really well. And it has a little net packed in with it. So it, it's easy to unfold. And then you put the mask side on your face and then you peel the net off. So that allows them to pack the, to make the, um, physical sheet mask, like again, really, really soft and absorbent, almost like a, it's like not quite a paste. It's just holding together. And I just feel like my skin really loves that. And it's also then easy to wear around because it adheres to your face and you can like do other stuff while it's sticking to your face. Right. So the whole quality of it is amazing. And the experience of putting it on, I was like, this really feels like a luxury sheet mask. And I think they are kind of expensive. I think it's like 30 bucks for a five pack, which is like pretty expensive for a sheet mask. And then immediately as I was putting on, I was like, this smells <laughs> so strongly of horseradish. It, it just smells like food, really like horseradish sauce, really. I was like, is there horseradish in this? Is it just made of horseradish? Is it just a sheet mask of horseradish? But I don't think so. I looked and then I, I scanned the <laughs> ingredients. I don't think that it's horseradish sheet mask. It appears to just have all of the normal ingredients of a sheet mask. So I stuck it out, wore this horseradish sheet mask around, you know, and then I uh, patted in the extra serum, put on my skincare, went to bed, and I woke up the next morning and it was like, instead of my face, a baby's face. It, re my skin really, 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 really loved it. And I now am like cherishing the last three. I've used two and the last three are like precious gold to me because they just feel like they really helped my skin. But at the same time, they really smell like horseradish. So it's like the widest gap I've ever seen between how well a product performs and how weirdly and strongly it smells. The widest gap, I think. So that's how it's gone down between me and these lather sheet masks. And if anyone has been talking about lather in the comments, I've missed it because I was holding forth about, I was holding forth about um, horseradish. <laughs> but no, so so um, someone's asking if I've ever used like those reusable masks. It's something that I've always thought about. And I've, people are always recommending, they make silicone ones too. Like you can just put on your skincare and then put this, sheet mask over it. It's like a washable one that hooks over your ears and that provides the barrier without, I've never tried it, but you know, from the way I talk about sheet masks, it's something that I definitely should try. Okay. We did the sheet masks. We did it. How's everyone doing? Amy asks if it's the one from my Instagram post. It is. That is the one. I was masking and cleaning the bathtub at the same time on that day. I don't think I, I said that in the Instagram post, but that's what I had just come from doing. I was wearing like bicycle shorts, that oversized tie-dyed tee, a sheet mask, and I was cleaning the bathtub. And then I came down and I was walking past the mirror and I was like, hey girl, hey. I was like, I don't know if I would say I look kind of cute. I just look kind of something. And my February resolution, you know, I'm doing a different New Year's resolution every month. My February resolution is to post on Instagram every day and I hadn't taken a picture that day. So I was like, maybe everyone wants to see how I look. 
<laughs> how I look when I clean the bathtub in a sheet mask on the weekend. And then I posted that on Instagram and it appeared that everyone did want to see it. Yeah. Never heard of lather, but they have one at the Atlanta airport. That's kind of how I felt when I looked them up. I was like, never heard of lather, but they probably have one at the Atlanta airport. Yeah. The thing about them, I read about them because they sent me this PR. The founder has a, has like a very strong aversion to uh, like a reaction to synthetic fragrance. So she was like, I'm going to make a brand that offers all the things, but is okay for someone who doesn't, who like has like allergic reaction or, you know, can't breathe in perfumes and stuff. Like, you know, some people, they just get a really terrible pounding headache when they breathe in synthetic fragrance. She's like, I'm going to make a brand that doesn't cause that problem for everyone. That was where lather came from. But the, the products that I've been using, um, they have scent, some of them. I mean, <laughs> it has a smell. It's just not, it doesn't include any of whatever the stuff is that triggers that kind of reaction in people. Um, so another one that I've been using smells really weird. The, uh, the cleansing oil. They sent me the cleansing oil, the face cleansing oil. Beautiful product. Smells like a Best Buy. Like it literally smells like I'm in high school I'm, go, I'm at Best Buy. I'm looking at the CDs. I, I want another CD from Tribe Called Quest. I'm a freshman in high school. I'm like flipping through the CDs in the Tribe Called Quest section in Best Buy in Pennsylvania. Like that's what it smells like every night I use it. And I'm like, can I kick it? Yes, you can. Like in that Best Buy, girl. It's just wild. And I think it's just the oils, just the smell of the oils because it's not scented. And then I'm also using a shaving cream that they sent me that is beautiful and it has sweet almond oil in it and it smells like sweet almond oil and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'll full review of all the things will come in time. Speaking of scent, I used up the Athena Club deodorant in the number two scent. Athena Club, I've loved a lot of the stuff I've tried from them. They make two scents. There's number two, which I absolutely love. And this is a natural deodorant and works really well for me. And there's the number one scent, which I really don't like. It smells like baby powder and, and coconut oil or something. So I, I really recommend that the number two scent of the Athena Club. What is it? It smells kind of spicy. Ro it's like it's got rose, but it's spicy. It's like a rose patchouli, but not... Not in the way that you think of like the way essential oils of rose and patchouli would smell, but the way like a perfume scent of rose and patchouli would smell. So I, I really, really like it. Flax. Yeah. I do have a pet. I have a little cat. Oh, someone else who went through, who's who's gone to lather. Y'all, my eyes they're watering so much. Yeah, all of my eyeshadow has watered off. Excuse me. Excuse me while I fix my eyeshadow. I think it's just the dry air. They have my eyes haven't been watery like this in a long time. And I think it's just it's just all of the heat. All right. What else is in my bag? Um, let me see what time it is. Okay, I've got, I've got a little bit of time. I used up this Bioderma, which also Sambri gave me. And um, it's great. I really, it's a whole thing. So because we were just talking about those pads, like throwing away those pads, you know, I used to use cotton rounds. I stopped using them for, and I got some reusable cotton rounds and they were great, um, but I, it was hard, it's hard for me to remember to wash them, to find the right time to wash them, because if I wash them with other laundry, they tend to sometimes, the makeup will I get on the other laundry. Uh, sometimes they feel like the washing machine isn't really going to get them clean, because removing like a lot of makeup or, or cleaning swatches, which I have, you know, I do a lot, it makes them really messy. They were, they were like um, washable, reusable cotton rounds made out of terry cloth sewn together. I, I think you can get them from Etsy. Like they're all over Etsy. I do think that they have a purpose and I do, I have maybe 25 of them. I do wash them every once in a while. And then when they're dirty or then when they're clean, 
I use them again and I use them with my cellar water. But I just find that I, I probably would need like 65 of them. You know what I mean? For me to be only using them. So what I found myself doing, because I don't want to use, I don't want to go back to cottons. I don't want to like use paper towels or something. I'll like use a washcloth. I keep a washcloth on a hook next to my vanity and I'll use like part of the washcloth with my cellar water to, you know, whatever, clean up, clean up my face, clean up my fallout, and then hang the washcloth back up. And then I'll, the next day, use another part of it, use another part of it. And so I'll be able to use that washcloth like 10 times, just little bits of it, parts of it. It doesn't get so dirty that I can't, that, it, that it's like unsustainable. I'll like clean brushes on it. I'll, it's like my all purpose cleaning washcloth. And then that I can definitely wash it like with our towels. So it's like, instead of reusable cotton rounds, I've just been using washcloths and they stand in for like 10 reusable cotton rounds and they're easier to wash and easier to keep track of. So that's kind of where I've fallen with trying to use something that's washable in lieu of uh, little cotton rounds that you throw away. And in doing that, I've been making my way through some micellar water. So I, I finally used up this Bioderma. This is from a brand, is there anything else in, that's in here that they sent me? I don't think so. Um, Medicube, not to be <laughs> confused, <laughs> not to be mixed up with Metaheal, although they look like they, <laughs> they grew on the same tree. You know what I mean? Um, they just, they sent me a bunch of PR towards the beginning of the pandemic and it's pretty nice. It's nothing to write home about, nothing that I've thought fit to like mention on YouTube before now. Like it's all probably going to trickle through my empties, mostly just some creams and moisturizing serums and stuff like that. And, um, I've enjoyed it. This, the blue erasing cream is their richest cream. I use it as a night cream and it was nice. It was very basic, very nice. Um, I'm glad that they sent it. And that's kind of all that I have to say about it. I'm probably not going to like think about it again after I, after I like tell you, redo this little review in my empties. So that's that. That's that mattress man, as Joe says. Yes. Microfiber washcloths would probably be even better. I've been I mean, I know that I'm low, I'm low, I'm late to this party, but microfiber <laughs> is really good at removing makeup from your skin. And yeah, that actually would probably be even better than, uh, than like just the regular washcloth that I'm using. We just kind of have an abundance of just plain old washcloths. We have like the washcloths of a hundred people and there are only two of us. So they're easy to use. Here's another sleeping mask. This is the kind of thing that tends to accumulate in my empties because I just, I use like a thick, uh, thick cream all over my face most nights as my last step. So I was using this in the same capacity as I was using this. I think that this was PR from YesStyle, the Madacasoside sleeping mask from Apu. My friend sent me uh, this, but not the sleeping mask. It was my friend Prachi who has a, a YouTube channel. She sent me the just the Madacaso side cream from APU and it was one of the nicest K-beauty skincare products I've ever used. Really silky, really lovely, thick but also serum-y. I was able to use the seven skin method with it. I, I My skin just drank it up and really loved it. And I was hoping that the sleeping mask version of that would be like thicker and heftier. And so it would stay on my skin overnight. And it's like, it's too in between. It's not, it's not thick enough to really like stay as a thick layer. My skin would just, it would soak all in overnight, but it's also not as silky as the regular one. So I prefer the regular one to this, but that didn't keep me from using this one up. Someone tell Sadie that my cat RT says meow. I will tell her. Sadie has been, uh, <laughs> she, poor Joe. She just decided last week that nothing would do except for being asleep on his arms while he's working. So he's like at his computer editing, working. And she just was like insistently getting up there and draping herself across his arms like day after day after day 
with no respite. And so finally he moved a little box that she sleeps in to be right next to his keyboard on his desk. And that's where she's been sleeping. She just suddenly decided that she had to be like right there with Joe all day, every day while he's working. And it's been pretty cute. I have to say as a lover of Joe and a lover of Sadie, every time I go in there, they're just there together at the desk working and Sadie's curled in her little box and she's like, it's been good times. It's been a good week for them. Yes, the, my Canyon Dupe palette, that is what's on my eyes. That's what this is. And curiously, my challenge today, I tried to not use the purples. And so I just used like a dark red in the outer corner to deepen it up. And I'm not mad at it. I, you know, I like what I like, but I'm not mad at it. I used up one of my perfumes. If you saw my video about what happened to the year of less stuff, you will know did a perfume purge. I think I got it down to 10. Is that what I said in that video? I had 10 perfumes and I said I was about to pan two of them, pan two of them. And one of them I finally have. I really loved this scent. It was actually just a little sample size, as you can tell. Um, and it was by uh, a little, it's like a little oil perfumery called Sage. I'm not actually sure of the entire name of the brand, but it's like Sage perfume oils. I'll try to find it and link it again. It's their best-selling fragrance. It's called Onyx. And it's like a deep, dusky vanilla. And it has that real sticky duskiness that I feel like works better with an oil than something that you spray into the air that has like an alcohol in it that then sets down. It's like very creamy and dark, but, but vanilla sweet, like a spicy sweet vanilla. I love it. I love it. And I think I've been struggling to get through my perfumes during the pandemic because like spraying a perfume and being like, uh, 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 you know, while then to just go like cook dinner, or like walk around the neighborhood or do some gardening or edit a video feels like a little weird, you know, but a perfume oil like this, that's like, it feels like it really melts into my body chemistry. That has been something that I could get behind. And so I, that's why I used this up of all things during the pandemic. And this, I met the brand owner when I was at Indie Beauty Expo, something like that, over a year ago in downtown LA. And she was really nice. And she gave this to me. It's an indie brand. Really, really great. And I think also really great for people who, as per our discussion of lather, can't breathe in those synthetic fragrances and carriers. So that was really great. And... You would think that I would now be down to nine perfumes, but I've recently acquired two more. This brand, Dossier, I, I've been interested in them since Lauren talked about them because she bought the Santal, the Santal 33 dupe, Woody Sandalwood, and she says that it smells exactly like it. And I love that fragrance, the Le Labo fragrance. So they offered to send me PR and I was like, yeah, send me, <laughs> send me Woody Sandalwood. I know the Santal fragrance pretty well, and this smells almost exactly like it, almost exactly. And I'm kind of glad that they didn't like break, you know, like strain themselves to try to make it so indistinguishable from it that you can't tell, because I feel like it probably meant that this perfume is more, is better. It's a better perfume. So it says the top notes are violet leaves and cardamom. Middle notes are orris, ambrox, cedarwood, and cypriol. Base notes are musk, sandalwood, and amber, which is my jam. And I absolutely love it. It's like, it smells so good. And then the other one that they sent me is the is the um, Terre d'Hermes, the Hermes, one of my other favorite scents. And again, almost exactly like Terre d'Hermes. It's called Spicy Vetiver but a little bit more grapefruit, I think. Uh, but these, I mean, I'm really excited. I, I have actually been wearing these in spite of the fact that I just said that I haven't been going like spray, spray, spray. Uh, I maybe haven't worn as much of them as I would if I were like going out and about, but I've been doing like a little spurt on the wrists to test them out. And yeah, so far, pretty impressive. I actually used one of them to make one of my body scrubs. I made like a Santal a Santal based body scrub by spraying a bunch of the perfume into the body scrub. <laughs> and that was pretty amazing. Uh, so I'm up to 11 perfumes. I was down to 10, then down to nine. Now I'm up to 11. I should really, I should really like 
dedicate myself to, I think, wearing them even though I'm not going out and about. Some of you guys made a really good case for that in the comments of that video. And, and I bought it. I bought your case. Simbri says, they also sent me Woody Sandalwood and not for me. <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, I've been thinking about this lately because Julia and I made body scrubs together and we have the exact opposite scent profiles. The exact opposite. We have really, really different preferences. So it's definitely, it's definitely a personal thing. How's everyone doing? I'm sorry that I haven't been able to like be in the comments completely, but um, I've got to get through these empties, you guys. I feel, <laughs> yeah, I have about 15 more minutes that I can be here for. So, and we've got one, two, three, four, five. We have six empties left. So that's like one every couple of minutes. They might have to do kind of a flash style, but this one will be easy. The Sephora Bright Future Green Color Corrector. My favorite color corrector of all time. I used it up. I haven't repurchased it even though I would be within my rights to do so because it would be a replacement. I'm so enjoying being on a no buy, like me personally being on a no buy that I just feel like I wanna stick it out and I'm fine without it. Like I can make it. When it's my spending season again at the beginning of April, I'll probably buy it as a replacement, but I just like the feeling of of saying, of not. You know, when I, when I used this up, I was like, oh, I used it up. I could place an order from Sephora and I could replace it. And then I was like, but what if I just don't do that? Because that's been my response to myself every time I've wanted to buy something, whether it's sanctioned or not. And then I was like, yeah, let's just, let's just not. It's like a way of showing myself that I can live without even things that I think of as necessities. So that's what I've done. I used this up a couple of weeks ago and I haven't replaced it and I probably won't. I probably won't be using green color corrector until April. And also, did they discontinue it? Because every time I look it up, it's either there or it's not there or it's there, but it's it's not in stock or it's like, I don't know. It keeps fl flip flopping in and out of stock and in and out of availability on Sephora's website. I really hope that they don't discontinue it. Maybe it's just being repackaged or reformulated or something, but who knows? By April, it might be that I can't actually purchase this and I'll have to find something else. That'll be fine. Let me know in the comments if you know something about the Sephora Bright Future Green Color Corrector and what it's, it's destined for. I used up a lip balm. This is an herbivore lip balm I've had for a long time. It takes me a really long time to use up this kind of thing. It was really lovely. It was rose. It's completely empty. I'll show you. I know some people really love to see that. Satisfying. This. Wendy, hi! I work at Sephora and they are not discontinued for the time being, but they are off of assortment. They redid a lot of their brushes and foundations, so my guess is that it will be repackaged. Fingers crossed. I mean, that would be great. The tube isn't really the most elegant package, so the best thing would be if they repackaged it into a little pump. A little pump. That would be the best. This herbivore lip balm was great. It was very silky. It was very nourishing. My lips loved it. And I just don't like this pot style packaging. I just don't like getting my fingers in there. Um, I dragged my feet towards the end. I would have preferred it to be in like a push up tube or a, a squeeze tube or something. But the quality of it is, is high. If you like that kind of thing. I am testing this thing. I brought it over to show you this old thing, which I kind of have mixed feelings about because I feel like it's a new face, right? It's supposed to stimulate, it's like an electro microcurrent thing. It's supposed to stimulate collagen production in your skin and help like lift and tone a little bit. Obviously I would not have bought this. Obviously they sent it for testing. I was happy to test it because I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm getting into my late thirties. I'm about to turn 36. And that kind, that is like the, what I'm seeing on my face, like a little bit of a loss of tone, especially droopy, like around here. So I feel like I'm a good tester for it. You know what I mean? Cause I, I'll be able to sort of like see if it actually does address those exact concerns, which are the concerns that it's supposed to address. I also am just starting to get stubborn wrinkles. So it's not like I'm trying to transform an already quite 
creased face. It's just like, there's a little one that's pretty much always here now. And so I'll be able to see if it like takes the edge off of that. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, I'll test it. I'm giving it a really, really, really long time. I'm probably going to give it two months. I've been using it almost every day for a month, really religiously. I'm probably going to give it another month before I say anything about whether it is or isn't working on YouTube, because I just want to make sure that I've done my due diligence. But here's what I will say. They sent this tube of the primer that you use with it. It's like you put this on your face and then you use the nodes of the electro current thing to glide around. I think it, it's like the conductor. And I used this up within a month. And I know that you can use other stuff. Like I think you can use aloe vera gel. I'm using a gel mask that I have instead of this. But that is already like my fir the first bit of my review is that I, I think it probably wouldn't be cost effective to like keep purchasing this from New Face. It's a bummer because it's like this is already so expensive and then you just have to keep repurchasing this like one a month if you want to keep using it. I don't think so. I would definitely and I will definitely find a much less expensive alternative to the one that they recommend using that they manufacture for use. So that's already in my empties. I don't know. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to like tell you how I feel it's going with the new face, but I, I'm really uh, wary of like reporting back at this middle stage because I think that probably some of it is psychological. Like I, I'm sitting there every day and being like beep, beep, beep with the thing. And it just, it really makes you feel like you're doing something. And so I feel like I have all these feelings about it. Like, oh yeah, I feel like my skin has like been a little plumper and glowier. And I feel like my jawline looks firmer and I feel like it might even be like helping with acne a little. Like I have all these kind of feelings around it, but I really want to wait for photographic evidence over the long term before I make any of those claims because I know how like eager we can be to believe that devices like that are like <laughs> reversing the aging process, you know? And I just, I have mixed feelings about it because I, because I have, I, I don't love this part of the beauty industry where it's like, work against aging, prevent aging, like aging is bad. And, and a, a face that looks older than another face is a worse face. Like I, I don't like things that, that promote that perception, which is like a real problem in our culture because it's just not true. You know what I mean? It's like, you only get better as a person as you age, like everything about you just gets better because you learn more and you live more and you have more wisdom and you have more equanimity. And it, and I hate the way that our perception of like the problems with an aging face counteracts that and like takes that power away from people. I just really hate it. Um, so I have mixed feelings about that side of the industry, but at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> I want to believe, you know what I mean? That it's going to like reduce this little wrinkle. So that's where I'm at with it. And uh, yeah, this is, it, it just, I feel like the bottle needed to be like five times this big. <laughs> that's all I'm saying about that. Oh yeah. Interesting. Stephanie says, it's also hard to tell if it's just the face, facial massage or lymph drainage. Yeah. Like that, that's another thing. It's like, there are so many people, even pe people in my comments and, you know, just people I've talked to have been like new face really, really works for me, but I am acutely aware that that I'm also like massaging my face and spending time. You know what I mean? Like there are all of these other things. Yeah. Yeah. Someone saying I'm 25. I'm scared of aging. Like, I think that that that's something that we shouldn't be carrying. You know what I mean? And I'm not blaming you. I mean, I, I carry it too. Like we all are. I think that carrying this like fear of what will happen to our faces and bodies as we age. I just, I so wish if, that I, that I could relieve us all of that burden or someone could, you know, it's like, it's uh, a very insidious kind of oppression, you know? All right, let's go on. I used up this bottle of Good Jeans, which was sent to me as a gift, Sunday Rally Good Jeans. It's a lactic acid serum. Love it. Absolutely love it. I don't know whether I'll ever buy this again with my money because 
since I changed the way that I think about cost per use and value with skincare, this is like way out of the range of what I consider to be appropriate for me to spend my own money on. But it's probably like the one iconic superstar skincare product of my entire life. So I could see myself like if I ever became uh, a real skincare minimalist, like really, really reduce the number of things I buy and just was using like the same products. And like in that way, leaving space for myself to spend a little more on individual products, I could sort of see myself deciding to incorporate this. This was sent to me as a gift uh, by a friend, by the way, and not from the brand. Like it wasn't PR. Uh, it was a gift from a friend. So yeah, I don't know. I, I have a little sample size that was also sent as a gift from a friend and I'll make my way through that. And then I, I just, in my current life, I can't see myself purchasing good jeans again. Um, but time will tell. I actually feel like my feelings about this product are so mixed up that I don't know if I will be, able, I can't say what I will do until it's time. Like I actually feel about this product. Like I can't predict my actions. I think when I have none and I've been without it for weeks or months, and then I have a, a moment where I sit down with myself and I'm like, do I want to spend my money on that? That's when we'll know <laughs> whether I'm willing to buy good jeans or not. I just feel like when my skin is really acting up, when it's at its worst and it feels a little bumpy and it feels kind of like dull and I just need like a facial, like an overnight facial, a thick layer of good jeans always brings it alive like nothing else. And that's why it's like so hard for me to let it go. So that's that. All right. We have two things left. This is the uh, YSL Touche Claw, which was PR. It came in PR a long time ago. I want to say it was like over a year ago. And um, I accepted it in PR because they had just widened the shade range and finally the lightest shade was light enough for me. And that was really exciting. When they sent this to me, they also sent the Touche Claw Concealer. I much prefer the Touche Claw Concealer. I had them at the same time. The concealer goes lighter because uh, I think they have more shades in it because it's more coverage. So it goes lighter. The lightest shade is yellower and lighter. And it's just like this beautiful radiant. It's one of my favorite concealers that I've ever used. The regular Touche Claw, the lightest shade is kind of pink. It still looks fine on me. I did use it up. You know, I used it up before it went bad, but I wouldn't buy this again. If I was really feeling myself and really, really indulging, I could see myself in theory buying the Touche Claw concealer someday in the lightest shade. I do really, really love that. Right now, probably not. I'll probably just keep replacing my Makeup Forever one, but it is one of those like luxury products that I might treat myself to someday kind of thing. Okay, the last thing in the bag, I just used up this morning. And I'm kind of proud of myself because this was also in the uh, advent calendar, the Yes Style advent calendar. So that means that I really, I really like breezed through it because the Yes Style advent calendar was, I mean, I guess it wasn't in December, right? Didn't they send it out like in October or something? So it was like probably November, December, January. So it was probably three months that I had to use this. Um, but I didn't really start using it until a little bit later. I think I want to say like December. It's just that for a long time, I wasn't taking care of my skin because, because of the like sadness. I mean, like because of emotional stuff, you know what I mean? It's like that, that can, that can be one of the bits of fallout of like mild depression or like tiptoeing in and out of feeling depressive is you just sort of like skip self-care and then it becomes comfortable to skip it. And so you kind of skip it day after day. I'm sure that you guys know what I mean. I think a lot of people have been dealing with that during this year. Uh, paradoxically, I think, cause we kind of have time, you know what I mean? Like we're at home, we don't have other things to do. Like we have time to spend half an hour masking and yet, weirdly, I think that there are a lot of us who are spending less time than ever on that because it's just hard to like break through that membrane of bleakness sometimes. So I talked about this in the video a couple weeks ago, braiding my hair and talking about New Year's resolutions. My January New Year's resolution, which was dry January, during it, I was thinking about the things I might do in February. And one of the things I was considering was to renew my efforts to take good care of my skin. 
And what happened was just thinking about it made me renew my efforts. And I started taking much better care of my skin. So I have been using this. It's the iUnique, sorry, I didn't say what it was. The iUnique Black Snail Restore Serum. And uh, I think that the reason I was able to use it all up so fast is that it's very moisturizing, it's scent free, so it feels like really good to put on. It's watery, so it soaks in, but it's moisturizing. So it doesn't leave too much of a film, it doesn't mess with other skincare, it doesn't mess with makeup. You can pack it and pack it into your skin and it has just enough beefiness, like just enough of a, that sort of slippery texture that you really feel like you're doing something rather than it just feeling like water. It's just perfectly balanced in all ways. So I feel like I was drinking it up kind of like my skin was drinking it up. And every day since I really started using it, I was using it already, but it was really in the middle of January that I started using it a lot. I was using it, um, huge, and it also has a very big dropper. So I was using like two or three big dropper fulls a day, putting them off, putting like a huge dropper full in my hand and then massaging it, massaging it, massaging it into my skin another huge dropper full, massaging, massaging, massaging. The viscosity is such that each dropper full would massage into my skin in between. So it was like soaking in and it just felt really good to do that. And in doing that, I, I used it all up. So I think that this is very good. I have other serums like this that I personally need to get through, but I could see myself um, in an, either in the future, like if I were to run out of serums like that, or in an alternate universe in which I didn't have other serums to use, I could see this being on my list of the ones that I would happily repurchase. I think that, especially uh, in K-beauty, in the realm of K-beauty, uh, or you know, even just everything that's available on Yes Style, a lot of this kind of thing is heavily scented. And so it's nice to find one that works beautifully that is unscented. So uh, I do think that this is a, a good product. And I, did, I do think that my skin benefited from my aggressive campaign <laughs> to use it up and to take better care. Okay. Those are all of my empties. Uh, let's hang out for like two more minutes. Let me know if you have any little questions that I can answer really quickly. Um, and, and just quick reminder, if you joined the, uh, the, this, I talked about this at the beginning of the live chat. If you joined the live chat in the middle and you didn't see this, I'm hosting an online book launch, a virtual book launch for this really, really wonderful book by my friend and mentor, Sharna Fabiano. It is this Sunday. It's at four o'clock PST and it's free. And there's going to be live tango music and a Q and A with, with Sharna and me and other really cool people. It's going to be really inspiring. I think it's just an hour. And if you go to sharnafabiano.com, you can register to um to attend there also is going to be a raffle she's going to give away a copy of the book and um, then the book will be like available to i think you can already pre-order it but i think that's the day that it's launching so i hope that you'll come it would be so fun if some of you were there and i'm really excited to be able to share sharna with you because she's had a really she's been a big influence on me like she's one of the people who's inspired me a lot inspired me to be the way that i am in a lot of ways. And so it's a gift to us that she's finally put her, put some of her brain into book form for us to read. So um, yeah, come to the book launch. Oh my gosh. Sharon says, are you still using your Finding Ferdinand lipsticks? I am still using them all the time, uh, especially the sheer one, Redwood Construction and the uh, Sooty Peony, the kind of pale, pale grungy one. I, I'm using them all the time. I love my custom cobalt one. Amazing. Cobalt blue lipstick. Oh my gosh, that reminds me. Should I do this right now? I want to do it right now. My friend Ted, Buffalo Beauty Boy, through Finding Ferdinand, created me a custom lipstick. Sent it to me. And I haven't tried it yet because I wanted to do it on camera. And I was going to do it. Uh, in the video in which I tried Angie's palette on my eyes and I forgot because I was like so distracted. I forgot. So I still, I'm going to go get it and put it on on camera right now. BRB. Uh, 
Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I remember to do this. Okay. Here it is. Finding Ferdinand from Ted McKnight to Hannah. The color name is Ruth is fine, which is a reference to uh, one of my favorite series of books, the three pines mysteries by Louise Penny. There, I've talked about this before on my channel, but there's an old curmudgeonly poet named Ruth, and she writes a book called I'm Fine, but fine in the book stands for fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and egotistical. And so this Ruth is fine, F-I-N-E, it's a reference to that. It's like, you know me so well, Ted, you got my, you got me, you got my number. Um, I... When I open, I haven't looked at the color yet, but when I opened this and I saw the color name, I got such a huge, I like smiled so big that I was crying. <laughs> so like, that's amazing. And it's one of the colors, or it's one of the uh, custom hand-painted bullets. Look, when I ordered mine, I didn't order any of the custom bullets. Mine are all just white, but the one that Ted ordered me is this. I think he did this in collaboration with Finding Ferdinand. They like reached out to him and together they were in cahoots to do it. Um, it's a really cool brand. It's a small team, really personal, really awesome. I mean, and I didn't really understand that fully when I did the original review, but I've sort of like talked with them a little since then. And um, it just seems like a, a lovely company. So yeah. Okay. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. It's pink, but it definitely looks like a pink that I can manage. Mm, it smells good. It's like berry, bubble gum or berries or something. And it also definitely looks like maybe something that I don't own a dupe for. You know what I mean? Which is also really exciting. Oh, I'm going to put it on. I only have on a little bit of this Clarins Instant Light Lip, Lip Perfector right now. All right, ready? A bubblegum raspberry pink. That is what it's like, but like light enough for me. You know what I mean? Oh. I love the Finding Ferdinand formulas. They're so, the, I like, it like pushes the pigment into the skin of your lips instead of just sitting on top. Okay, here's what's happening. Ted is pushing me outside of my comfort zone instead of just catering to what I always buy and what I always wear. And I kind of live for it because in spite of the fact that I wouldn't, I'm seeing what you guys are saying. It is, it is like my lips, but better. Yeah, but definitely with lipstick and it's like, it's like natural, but not, or more like not, but natural. You know what I mean? Here's what I'll say. I'm feeling fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to be wearing this and mm, it feels good on the lips too. Thank you, Ted. And thank you, Finding Ferdinand. I'll wear, I'll keep wearing it. I'll report back. But first impressions, yeah, it, it's really great. And it's like, it's going to be, it's like a standout shade for me. I did, I filmed a fun video recently in which I was just randomly swatching a bunch of lipsticks overhead silently. I was just like, let's play. Let's do what I sometimes do by myself, which is just swatching stuff to see what it looks like by myself, you know, not by myself. Sorry. <laughs> that is what I often do by myself, but let's do it together. Right. And then I'm going to like edit the video and post it. And I was struck by how repetitive, even though I don't have very many or any like exact dupes, how repetitive my lipstick collection is. It's all like orangey reds and browns, all 
It's all the same version of shades. So something like this is going to really stand out. But the things that I have that do stand out, like NARS Scap and NARS Catherine, I tend not to reach for them as much because they're these like full pigment stamped on lipsticks that like really make a statement. So this is going to stand out, but it's much more wearable than those. So in terms of like giving me something that I didn't already have and broadening my horizons, Ted, you nailed it. Okay. I do need to go. Uh, I just need to do more lives and maybe I should do one like Samantha Ravendahl style where I just like hang out, read the comments, respond, read the comments. I should schedule one of those soon. Um, because the best thing about this is like being here with you guys and seeing all of your comments, but doing an empties at the same time meant that I had to just kind of like talk at the camera and not read the comments for stretches at a time. Um, but it was still really fun. And I appreciate you all so, so, so much for being here. Uh, I also hope that I'll see some of you at the book launch. Don't forget SharonaFabiano.com. I also linked it in my community tab. So if after this you forget, you can go to my community tab and you can find the link. And um, I think that that's it. I think that the only thing I have left to say is that I really hope that you won't forget to take extra good care of yourself today, whatever that means for you. Be honest with yourself. Decide what that means. Make an active decision and then do it. Because taking extra good care of yourself is the only thing that will allow you to be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.